Welcome to 3D View. One conversation, three different perspectives. I'm Lamondre Pugh. I am David Perez. And I'm Richard Strice. Thank you for joining us. On August 28th, 2020, the world awoke to some very sad news. It was the passing of actor Chadwick Boseman from colon cancer. The world was shocked because no one knew that he was dealing with this illness because he did so in secrecy. He did so being very quiet and going about his work. And Chadwick Boseman is known for some incredible roles, uh, roles that were really representative of the African-American community. Uh, he was Jackie Brown in the movie 40. Um, yeah, Jackie Robinson. I'm sorry, Jackie Robinson in the movie 42. He was James Brown in Get On Up. He was Thurgood Marshall in the movie Marshall. But his most popular and most praised role was King Chitala in Black Panther. And today we're going to talk about representation and why representation matters. Black Panther was a blockbuster film which grossed over a million dollars, uh, excuse me, a billion dollars with a B worldwide. And this was the first time a movie that was uh, led by an African-American actor uh, that had uh, this, uh, the, the cast was predominantly uh, black people, uh, had grossed this much and had this kind of a budget and this kind of a um had this kind of an impact and so we want to talk about why representation matters what are the issues around representation and what does it mean um for diversity to be represented particularly uh in the area of arts and i can tell you from from my perspective when when i went to the theaters to see Black Panther for the first time. It was indeed a great film, but there was something bigger than it just being a great film. It actually touched me in a way that I would almost categorize as spiritual uh, because there was somewhat of, there was somewhat of an awakening um, in me in terms of being able to to not only see uh, people who looked like me doing these amazing things on film, but there was also a history that was represented very well. There was a culture that was represented very well. But here's the thing, it was not listed as a black film. It was not listed as, oh yes, we have to put this over into the category of a urban film or an ethnic film in any way it was a film about a superhero it was simply a great film and so that that really said something to me and it spoke to me in a different way guys well you know i i would say that you know hats off to marvel for um for being really forward thinking and and making the conscious decision of not making it all about a um, a black lead or a black star that was you know it, it, that wasn't it. it it just was here was the, here was the here was the character that was the superhero and here was the here was the 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 context of that and it was they they just marketed it like they would have marketed any other film without necessarily any pretense to, uh, um, about it and. And I think that you know that's that's the right way. That's the right thing. There shouldn't be any of that. Um, and and so you know certainly kudos to them for for choosing to do that and 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 moving in that direction. Um, you know, in in regard to just the what we know now was the personal sacrifice that the actor himself went through during the filming of a lot. He was going through treatments and so forth and, yeah. and no, and, and very, very privately. I mean, you know, that he, th there was none of that, um, that was made public until after the fact. Um, and, uh, and, and so, so uh, what a great sacrifice for, for art, uh, you know, in essence for, for art and entertainment, which only goes to show you the commitment that he had as, as a performer, as a professional in making sure that, um, that what his personal, um, 
um, challenges were weren't interfering with the performances that he was producing because it was it was it was long evidently because there were a couple films that he was going through these treatments uh, and a couple different times. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, absolutely. And the effect of Black Panther was a global thing. Mm -hmm. It was not only something that stayed in the U.S. and Marvel is completely global. So that the fact that there, there were so many people that could identify with this superhero is completely mindset changing, I think. Right. And I think that that's probably what drove him to still record despite all of all the suffering that he was going through. I think he knew the power that popular cr culture could have towards changing the world because as societies we are built from what we understand of the world and that understanding of the world comes from what we consume and that consumerism that we that we do day by day is of course of everything that we see and that we that we get through shows radio youtube and of course movies and television that that builds our our psyche that builds who we are and how we interact with the world and representation matters because it's a way of including people in society starting from from the basic more unconscious parts of of the of the mind and i think that's the the most significant inclusion that we can get absolutely and and i think that when we talk about representation matters i want to give just some examples of 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 really the power um of that i think about how for the longest particularly in the dawn of 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 hollywood how black people were portrayed in movies uh, you know this is where you got um you know step and fetch it where you've got um you know really slow speaking um shiftless um, these images of, of, of reinforcing stereotypes of, you know, black people being lazy and, um, uneducated and, and, and dimwitted. Um, and this was, this was what was put out there. This is what was promoted. This is what, this is the only thing that you could see of yourself. And here's the thing. It wasn't just about black people seeing themselves on screen being portrayed this way. This also reinforced what white people and others thought and saw of black people. And honestly, that continued along for uh, for a long time, by and large, by and large. And what I mean by that, people will point out, well, what about Sidney Poitier or what about you're right? There were Sidney Poitiers, but it was Sidney Poitier. You know, the, in, in other words, he became the exception and not the rule. And unfortunately, that trend continued. Um, we looked at what happened with the black exploitation films of the 70s. Uh, and then even in the, the 80s, where every time you saw a black character, um, you know, he was a drug dealer, or he was a thug or, or, or one of these kinds of things. And this was the majority of the kinds of roles that were available. In fact, Chadwick Boseman talks about uh, when he was on a soap opera and uh, he played this um, this guy who had some some uh, some tough times uh, in his life. And, you know, he, he did his part and it was only supposed to be like for a short run, like maybe one or two episodes. And the executives brought him in the room and they said, we're really happy uh, with your performance. And, it, and then the story is out there. He you know, he's told it uh, multiple times. We really enjoyed your performance. Uh, and we want you to be around for a long time. And if there's anything you need from us, just let us know. And he saw this as an entry. He said, well, I tell you what, I have some questions about my actor, about my character. Um, and so he's like, so it says that his father, that my character's father wasn't around. Why, why wasn't his father around? It was like, well, he left when he was younger, of course, of course. Then he asked, he said, well, it says that the mother, my mother was, um, was incapable of raising myself and I believe a sibling. And he was like, why was that? Why wasn't she able to take care of us? And they said, 
because she was on heroin, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. And he said, yeah, well, I just wanted some background because those things could actually have happened, but I just wanted some background and I wanted to be able to understand the background of my character. And they looked at his resume and they said, we'll keep an eye on you. And they put the resume in the desk. He went home the very next day, his agent called and said, uh, they decided to go another way. We won't need you for this anymore. And so what happened was these assumptions about who black people were, were prolific in, in this. And it was over and over and over again. I even think about the nineties, the characters that really stood out. And there were some groundbreaking things that happened there, but again, predominantly thugs, drug dealers, prostitutes without. And so just as positive as black Panther, the movie was, for people of color, for black people, those other movies, those other media elements were negative and they reinforced negative stereotypes. And this is why I say representation is so important. You know, one of the things that, that as you were talking about that, that comes to mind is art imitates life. Um, you know, the, 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 the term art imitates life and how art, um, at, at any level, whether it's film or, 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 or any one of the traditional arts or, or you know, painting and, and music and so forth, it tends to be a reflection of society at, of the time. Um, and, and I think if you look at, at films as sort of a microcosm of art, of a slice of, of the art and entertainment, um, uh, and, and, you, and you look how that has sort of reflected the times, one of the things I think that is encouraging is as a result of these industries becoming more mature and more in tune with what's happening around um, film like Black Panther and how that was handled, how, how it's marketing, how it was treated, how the, you know, the, the producing executive staff and Marvel um, um, chose to, to move forward with that is, is positive in how that's sort of what we're going through now and we're experiencing. I mean, we're seeing all sorts of unrest that's happened, uh, you know, globally um, based on, on equality, because I think we're at a time and place globally, culturally, societally, as, as a species of realizing that this is really important now. Um, it's not that it wasn't important before, but it wasn't as front and center. Um, and now it is, it is absolutely front and center, not just here in the U.S., but all over the world. It's a global, uh, you know, as we've talked before, it, it's a global, major global movement. And, and, and so I, I think in many ways that the treatment of that sort of sets a new precedent, sets a bar as to how, these mater how this material should and needs to be treated in the future. Um, and again, as uh, we're talking about this particular film specifically, but really in all art, um, you know, whether it's music, all types of genres of music, um, art, any traditional art, sculpting, painting, what have you, um, we're, we're seeing a, a trend where there is much more prominence um, um, put on just the talent itself as opposed to where that individual came from and the color of that individual skin or, so, or you know, that, that sort of thing. We're seeing a, a little more broader um, ex general acceptance, which is the right thing to do. That's what we should be doing. Yeah. In many ways, I think that it is true that art imitates life, but I also think that life in many ways imitates art. Well, uh, yeah, it goes both ways. Ab absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it yeah. becomes a, a vicious circle mm -hmm. of yeah. art Which is being a Im imitating life. Yeah. Art imitates life. Life mm -hmm. yeah. imitates art, fits from those perceptions. Those perceptions create policies. Those policies... Yeah create realities and those realities are not always what we want them to be. Right. Yep. right. So that, that breaking of the mold through, through something like black Panther and of course that democratization of art, I think mm -hmm. that has happened is of course bringing new perceptions to, to the people, to the general population, the ones that in some way or another are going to end up shaping the future of the world. So it's incredible the power that actually art has to oh. to shape a society in every single level. Like 
everything that happens from when you drive down the street to when the president makes a an executive order, it's all fed through through art. Art mm-hmm. represents it, and art is also making sure that they are they are part of the of the social psyche. Right, right, and I couldn't agree more that it is cyclical. But I also mm-hmm. think that w- what's important to to keep in mind with this, it also depends on who is administering and who is controlling the art that is produced publicly. Because here's the thing. I know since the dawn of filmmaking, whenever people got access to it, there were people, black people, who were making uh, art and films and music and everything that was uplifting, empowering, and really represented what we really are as a people. However, it was not what was promoted. It was not what was pushed. It was not what was seen before the masses. And this, again, is why representation is important. Because the truth is, you could have the best, you could be the best, but if no one else gets to see you being the best and having the best, no one knows. All they're going to know is what's being represented. And I'll give you a prime example of that right now. I love music. I am, and and I know Richard and David, I know you guys also uh, are, are music lovers. And I'm a fan of hip hop. Um, and I, I I grew up on old school hip hop. I grew up on Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, Curtis Blow, and all of these folks. And I remember growing up through an age of conscious hip hop when everything was, you know, was, was about being uplifted and, and, and all those kinds of things. But something changed. Something changed. And I'm talking about what was popular because at that time, Popular hip hop was conscious hip hop. It was poor righteous teachers. It was tribe called Quest. It was it was brand Nubians. It was it was these groups who really gave a message. Queen Latifah. Um, but now, what is popular is not really uplifting kinds of things. And I'm not trying to give a commentary on whether it's good or not, or whether it's right or not, but. What I am saying is it seems to be extremely one-sided now. And there are artists out there producing incredibly good music that's really positive, that's really uh, delivering a message, but it's not what's being pushed by major labels. Most of these artists that are um, doing more conscious uh, kind of music are independents. Mm -hmm. They're not the ones with the big budgets. They're not the ones with that. And... You know, on the one hand, people say, well, this is what people are buying, but they're buying it because that's what you're pushing. So it becomes this it becomes this cycle. And one of the things about Black Panther that stood out to me was not just the faces that were on camera, but it was about all the people in the background that also made it work. And so when you look at the set designers, when you look at the costume Mm -hmm. uh, designers, Mm -hmm. when you look at consistent, when you look at the director, Ryan Coogler. When, 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 when you look at the executives that pushed it forward, representation matters because in each of those roles, there were black people that pushed that forward. And you see, what I recognize is that so many times, particularly in the background of arts organizations and arts company, it's not the people who the story is being told about that's actually pushing the story that's actually creating it, that's actually doing the work. So I think Black Panther was monumental, not just because of what we saw on the screen, because what we saw on the screen was the coming together of what happened behind the scenes. And there was a mix of diversity. There was a, a, there was an authority of blackness uh, that, that really pushed that forward. And, And I think that that is one of the things that made it so great. Well, you know, I think the um, representation at all aspects of art, from the management administration to the actual artists themselves, is so critical. And and there is certainly, uh, without question, there's been a deficit of that. Um, Management and production has been very one-sided in dealing with with diverse artists. And as a result, it doesn't end up necessarily... um, following the same more traditional paths that that other artists may and and that's because of 
the, the potential blinds, um, blinders that are on um, a, a producer or, 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 or management staff or what have you. Um, and, and so, you know, I, I, I absolutely agree that there's, um, there has always been a, a huge deficit in that. And, and, but, but ha- having said that, I think one of the things that's, again, very encouraging is, is something that you touched on about the, the independence, um, you know, through the advent of the great ability to be able to self-produce and self-promote now, um, you know, like, you, you know, YouTube, for example, I mean, artists and, and, and are, are be able to, to promote their own stuff and, and the, the public opinion now can carry it without necessarily having to go through a producer or through a label. If it's good and it's, and it's, and it's popular and it's shared, boom, it goes from zero to, you know, a, a billion people in, in nothing flat uh, around the world and, and without ever having to deal with a, a particular label. Um, and so in many respects, that's sort of a wake up call for a lot of these uh, more traditional labels and realizing that, you know, they don't necessarily have that controlling power anymore as to what people see or, or, or control or from a financial point, how they can control uh, money, fun- money funneling through their organizations in order to promote a specific individual, right? I mean, right. Every, anyone can go out now. And again, if the art is good, if the, if the art or whatever, whatever is being uh, produced is something that's attractive to the, to the larger, broader general public, you know, it's, it's, it's going to stick. Right. Now, but, that brings up a whole other question. Uh, but, but anyway, yeah, I, I just wanted to point that out. No. And, and that's a good thing to point out. But I also think that that is a part of, of what makes it so important for larger studios and mainstream yep. mm-hmm. outlets to pay more attention to yep, representation. Exactly. Because here's the thing that I realized you said, if it's good, well, here's the thing. You may have an excellent story, and you may have uh, 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 an excellent way of telling that story, but you don't have, but you don't have the resources to really pull that out. You might not have yeah. the artistry. You might not have the mm-hmm. artisans right. to make it happen. So what could have been is then diminished, even though it's a great story. Yeah. You might not have no, the marketing right. machine behind it, or you yeah. know some things that you might not understand the algorithms that make it go viral. So this is why, yeah. again, and, and I will tell you, you know, we see, uh, particularly in the music industry, uh, how, how, you know, record companies are trying their hardest to catch up now, uh, yeah. you know, because, because they, they don't know how to do it. But still yet, yeah, you've got incredible budgets. You still have incredible mm-hmm. amounts of money that's pushing stuff that may not necessarily be what... Um, what the communities really uh, want or need, as we've discussed, the importance of art. You know. Yeah. No. And, and that's the thing. There's there's a difference between want and need, and I think that big corporations have always felt that they know what we need better than we actually do. Right. <laughs> and the democratization of art that I was talking about is specifically about people being able to create, even if it's not with the resources of big corporations, but they are being able to create, put it out there, and people are, are actually listening and seeing things that wouldn't have been able to, to exist any other way. There's a, there's a great example of this, and it's there's going to be a new like recreation of the Prince, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, right? The Will mm, Smith okay. series show. Mm-hmm. They are doing it. It's completely different. It's, it's a not drama. a comedy. It's a drama. Right. It's it's all about the oh. the hardships of a young black man in Bel Air and what he has to deal with because of his situation. Oh, interesting. This hmm. sparked from a YouTube video, a trailer that a kid put together because he had the idea and he just wanted to put something together. He put the trailer together. Will Smith was into YouTube at the time. So he saw it and he was like, I want to produce that. And they're going to do it. Yeah. 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 Well, it's the same thing with Issa Rae. Uh, you know, she has a, <laughs> yeah. uh, mm. she has the uh, show on HBO called Insecure. And I remember uh, Issa Rae's YouTube uh, show. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was like Chronicles of an Insecure Black Girl or something, or an Awkward Black Girl or something like that. And it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. And from that was spawned this. And so I am am thankful for the new mediums that are more independent and that allow for people to um, really express themselves on their own terms. Um, however, I still see a great need for 
major studios and major entities to really put that together, to have that machine behind them. And I'm glad that folks are starting to take a look at it. But I'm going to tell you something else that's been really powerful for me, and that's Tyler Perry and what Tyler Perry has been able to do um, with uh, with his work. And it, bl- it, 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 it absolutely blows my mind, regardless of how you feel about the Medea character and, 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 and the plays doesn't really matter. Look at what he's been able to do and look at how right. he's employing so many people and how he's putting, he, he, to me, he was the definition of, if you won't allow me to have a seat at the table, I'll create my own table. And that's precisely <laughs> what he did. And so now he has this, you know, hundreds of acres in, uh, in Atlanta uh, that's dedicated to his uh, production company and mm. portions of Black Panther were shot there. Portions of The Walking mm. Dead were shot there. And if you don't think that even though those things really didn't have his fingerprint on it, that because he was able to do that, that he influenced that, you're dead wrong. And so these are the kinds of things that I'm talking about when I say representation matters. His lot mm. is bigger than the lights in Hollywood. It's amazing. His his area is bigger than all three of them, you know, the major <laughs> ones. So it, it's um, it it, it it's it it, it 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 again goes to speak why representation matters. And just to forward this a little bit, I want to talk about some of the the the, the reasons why uh, representation matter representation matters. And I found I found an article. Uh, online it gives five reasons as to why representations ma- representation matter i don't know what's wrong with my mouth today <laughs> why representation <laughs> matters and number one it says everyone should have characters or images they can relate to yeah well. you know and when i think about <laughs> relating to um characters and 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 heroes again i go to T'Challa uh, in Black Panther, but I think about all of the strong women, the strong black women in that movie, and how like the general of the Wakandan army mm. was, yeah. you know, she it, it, it was woman. it was she was fierce, she was she was loyal, she was unrelenting, and she was a woman. It, it it wasn't a thing where it was a um it wasn't a thing where it was pointed out it just was and i thought that that was absolutely powerful yeah uh, you know you bring up a good point of of gender being put into the mix of that because there's especially in the past probably 5 or 6 years we've seen a litany of 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 films again, going uh, sticking with films, but also through other art genres as well, where women are are, are being much more um, prominent in their um, in, in their promotion of, of their works, uh, and uh, uh, you know, and, and this speaks again, I think, to the larger opening up of of studios, record labels, and so forth, of realizing the gap that's existed for so many years that's become just really painfully obvious. And that to be relevant and to be um to be up with what's happening now, to be to be socially conscious, they, they really are forced to have to um, come up to uh, to where we as a as a, as a larger societal culture are are want to go, um, right. and 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 being able to represent that. And is it as fast as it should be? You know, uh, that that's of course is is a lar- is a large debate uh, debated issue, and and the fact that we have to catch up at all means yeah. that we're too far behind. So, so right. you know, there's, there's that, but, but at least there is progress being made. And, and so that's, that, that is good. And, and, you know, you, you bring up, um, um, Tyler Perry and what he's done. Um, you know, you're right. Whether or not you like the, fran- the you know, the, the, the media, um, franchise that he's created is really immaterial. It's what he's done really behind the scenes in, in promoting that is far, far more important and, and critical, um, to the promotion of that. And, and there's a number of individuals like him as well that have done the similar, uh, done similar things, um, not necessarily to that scale, but 
but certainly helped with the promotion of um, representation in the industry. Um, and as a result, the, the industry that industry being the film industry, but there's, there's a lot of sub industries right. that are related to the film industry. You know, when you, when you're talking about marketing and, and, uh, and you get into the technical aspects of the, of the production itself, whether it's lighting and camera work and, 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 you know, and all of that, the product, the production, um, of, of sets and special effects. And, you know, there's just a myriad of, of industries that are associated with, uh, with, with when we, when we say the film industry. So, um, you know, I think that's really, really important that you point that out because that is certainly a key. And, and it, and the, the, the positive aspect is, is that it sets the trend for younger individuals that are growing up that see that, that you, like you said, they, they visually identify to then say, Hey, you know what? I can do that. I want to do that. Since that is something that I can do. And if, and if, he or she is doing it. I can do that. Yeah, Absolutely. and that's the thing. It opens uh, opens yeah. doors. Yeah, and w when do doors are open, people can take the path that they want, and yeah. it provides uh, options. Yeah. It, it it provides options, and that's that's the cool thing of technology. I think mm -hmm. that it has opened up all the options to anyone. Anyone can create a movie in their home. Everyone can create music in their computer. It's just a matter of. of being able to access that. And that's why I think also that accessibility is so important, right? Right. If yeah. we provide the tools for accessibility, it's probably going to happen that we're going to see the same effects from the community of people with disabilities. Right. That the black community is already getting from representation in movies and art in general. Right. And that leads me to uh, point number two, that it helps us to embrace our culture. So whatever, whoever mm -hmm. us is and whatever mm -hmm. our is, it helps us to embrace our culture. Again, you know, thinking about the beauty of movies like The Color Purple or, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and just seeing the, the, the southern roots of that movie. And I'm talking about, you know, not necessarily the story, the storyline of the movie, but how the backdrop was also a part of that. And I resonated with that so much from my childhood, being around my 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 grandparents and my great grandparents and just thinking about the environment in which they lived. Um, you know, the 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 wooden houses and the, the fields and the the livestock and the music, all of that was a celebration of who and what we are. And even even in Black Panther, um, you know, the different cultures that were represented um, and, and how beautiful it was. But I think of I think of other stories that, you know, taught me about um, Italian heritage or Spanish heritage and just being able to appreciate my own culture and wrap my arms around that but also being able to appreciate the culture of others right well you know the authentic the authenticity that's represented in that i i think only shows and shines through when you have individuals who are true represent who, who represent those cultures involved in the process you know when you have artisans who um, who are somehow connected to that culture, whatever, whatever, whatever it is, um, that comes through in the final production uh, of whatever is being crafted. Um, and so I, I think that that level of authenticity goes a long way. And if you look at films that were done earlier, um, you know, in, in say the, like the forties and fifties, you know, way, way back then, the, the, you can see that you don't have that richness and depthness in in the portrayals of those uh, of those settings of those movies, and and one of the reasons for that is because there's a lack of authenticity. Um, the the backgrounds and the imagery are all stereotypes right. that are again sort of a reflection of that time when you deal with any sort of eth any one of the ethnics uh, ethnicities that were that are portrayed in movies at the time, um, and so it's sort of interesting when you when you see that 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 one of the reasons why films now tend to be a little more rich, a little more engaging and a little more immersive is because there's an authenticity to, um, to the various, uh, the various crafts that are represented in being able to create a final product, whether it's music, film, art, whatever, whatever the medium is. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll tell you one of the, um, one of the things that uh, j just really quickly before we move to the next point, um, they were, they were doing an audio description of the movie Fences, uh, starring Denzel Washington and Viola Davis. And there was one particular scene where Denzel was standing outside and he's drinking and he pours a little bit out. 
Uh, and they didn't want to, or the, the person who was doing the audio description, uh, didn't want to include that as a part of a descriptive act in there. Well, the issue with leaving that out is that is a part of the culture. That is a part of the culture, and it, it informs the story just as much as the lines do. So it was important. So leaving that part out for individuals who were blind or who were using the um, audio descriptions really was leaving a part of the experience out. And so it was. he was pouring some out for the brothers who wasn't there, the brothers who had passed on. It was a way of paying homage to ancestors. And the truth is, leaving that out left out a part of the culture. And so it yeah. was a, a big thing that, that we had to get that included in the audio description of it so that people could embrace, understand, and appreciate the culture. The third thing was that there are stories that are missing. There are simply stories that are not told. So having representation uh, in mm -hmm. that allows those stories to be told, you know? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, it, again, it adds a richness, right, to to whatever culture is being represented. Um, uh, again, sort of a, in a mainstream way, we only know more, more um, broader, you know, broad strokes about cultures and about traditions and so forth, but not necessarily really into the fine details of them. And then again, that can only brought out by someone who's authentic and being able to, to talk and discuss that. And by, by having that level of representation, we have, a we, we would have a much more often or much better opportunity of having those stories that are the nuanced stories and, and, and a part of a culture that, that can come out that aren't just the sort of broad strokes, um, a more traditional mainstream ones that are, that are over promoted. Right. Yeah. And, and the problem with not telling stories is that they get forgotten. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. There are whole languages that are non-existent anymore just yeah. because we didn't, didn't tell the story. Represent them. Yeah. We didn't tell the story. So absolutely, it's yeah. fundamental. Yeah. Sto well, storytelling, uh, you know, is is so critical to all civilization from the dawn of time, from the time we're sitting around, you know, fires uh, in a cave. Storytelling is something that is just absolutely fundamental, and we can have the most technologically advanced civilization and and everything around us, but it all all of those mechanisms ultimately come down to being different ways of being to tell a story, um, being able to to continue and perpetuate those stories. You know, in the old days, it was hand it was it was mouth to ear, right? Is how those traditions and 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 stories were were passed on. Now, of course, we have much more sophisticated ways of doing that. But in its essence, it's still the same thing. It's about passing on the traditions of a story. Um, and, 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 and as a result, uh, um, traditions of a culture, or many cultures. Absolutely. And we start talking about passing down those traditions. The other the fourth point is that it's realistic. You know, mm -hmm. those, those, those traditions, those, those, those um, practices, those different things, it really represents the, the reality of that particular culture by seeing someone from that culture. I'll never forget the, um, the first time I saw uh, Cleopatra being represented by Elizabeth Taylor. And I was a little kid. I mean, and you know, I, you know, the movie was made before I was born. But when I first saw it, I was a little kid. And I was trying to understand why did my mother have a problem with this because my mother was livid about it right and i, I and, you know and whenever it came I said, nah, and she just changed the channel and i didn't quite understand why but it was elizabeth taylor being cleopatra and it, this couldn't have been further from the truth or 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 how many actors have we seen uh portraying and playing people with disabilities when there were people with disabilities who were actors that could have done the job and could have done it more effectively. Yeah. And it would have been a realistic portrayal. And that's not to besmirch anyone who has done the job, an actor is an actor, I get that. But if you can actually have a realistic representation of who, and what, it, particularly if it's a, not a fantasy thing, but it's an actual, um, yeah. an actual person who lived uh, or is living, to have that representation there, I think, is extremely important. And we're running short on time, but the last one that I wanted to talk about was number five, because everyone deserves to see themselves as their hero. 
Yeah, well, uh, ab- absolutely. Uh, and I think that goes to that goes to the tradition of storytelling. Um, that one of the powerful elements of storytelling is being able to see ourselves in those stories and and allowing, as a result of seeing us fit into those storylines, whatever character we, we, we relate to in a story, that helps push us um, and, and guide us to or, or motivate us to do whatever we w- want to pursue in life. And, and uh, or, or um, yeah, I mean, so I think that's fundamental. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. No, it is. It is. It definitely is. The the fact that you can see yourself in in a video game, in a movie, it, it of course feeds into your your being. It, it it makes you feel better about your chances of succeeding in this difficult thing that we that we have that we call life. So yeah. it's going to be incredibly important going forward. Yeah, and I'll tell you, um, just this this last point about seeing yourself in your heroes and seeing yourself as a hero i think about what the election of president barack obama meant um for black people in the country and it it meant a lot for for white people as well to see that in fact i think it may have meant more for white people to see that but for me regardless as to what you thought about policy regardless as to what you thought um uh, in, in terms of political alignment, just seeing that representation there meant that there were kids who couldn't say before I could see myself doing that. That I think one of the most poignant and one of the most beautiful photographs ever taken was President Obama leaning over as a little boy yeah. touched his yeah. hair yeah. because he said, I wanted to know if his hair felt like mine. Yeah. And that's beautiful. poignant, just a yeah. powerful, poignant it, moment. You know, that 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 um, that spoke volumes to me, just as the representation of Chadwick Boseman as King T'Challa spoke volumes to billions around the world and what it means for the future. Black Panther was a film that changed the movie industry and I would dare say has changed some lives. It has least, at least changed the perspective on how people see film, how people see heroes, and how people see movies. And in doing that, you change the world. So art matters and representation matters. And if you're an artist, if you're a person that's thinking, hey, this area... I'm passionate about this area. I want to do this, but I don't see anybody who looks like me doing this. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. Because representation matters, and your voice could be the voice that changes that perception for someone coming up behind you. So as you walk through the doors, as you approach the doors, and you turn the knob and you walk through, leave it open for someone else to walk through it. Why? Because representation matters. And as you ascend to your pedestals, shine, shine brightly because somebody needs your light in order to see their way to doing something even greater. So thank you for listening to us today on 3D View and watching us today. And we appreciate you. We'll catch you the next time. Thanks for joining us this week on 3D View. Make sure to visit our website, ruglobal.com slash 3D View. That's ruhglobal.com slash 3D View. Or you can subscribe to the show wherever you listen to podcasts or join our YouTube channel so you will never miss a show. While you're at it, if you find value in the show, we appreciate it if you would leave a like or comment or simply tell a friend about the show. That would really help us a lot too. If you would like to join our conversations, you can join our Facebook community, 3D View, 3 Perspectives, 1 Conversation.